this conference they... will now be recorded. So anyway, I just want to say hi to everybody because I'm not going to stay, okay? Did go you around. get the lesson so you can go through it? <laughs> so, so I'll see. I got all the stuff here. I, I look at it. Okay. Yeah, you'll like it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Take care of yourself. I, I, well, I am. I want to, I think I want to be around. I think I want my 90th birthday. Would that be neat? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm waiting for your 100. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Morning, Lee. Are Good you breathing morning. easier today? What? Are you breathing easier today since you got some of your stuff accomplished? Yeah, it was good to have a software day. That's what I had yesterday. I don't really want to do that because I want to sew, but sometimes I just have to have a software day. Yeah, so sometimes good. it helps. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for your help. I'm glad to see you back. We missed you. Talking to Mary? I'm sorry, are you talking to me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So I just, you know, I'm trying to catch up on projects. I, If I take too many classes, then I have a lot of projects, and I, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Multiple project disorder. Yeah. Yeah. The one with UFOs. <laughs> morning, Diane. Good morning. I was thinking the same thing this morning. I was like, oh, I haven't cut anything out. So I'm going to stay for the get it all set up and then save it and then do it, do the actual stitching at a later date, which I don't know. Were we going to stitch it all out today? No, uh-uh. Oh, okay, cool. That's the good thing about these projects is they're just software. I'm just learning our machines. They're not necessarily projects. So that's good for me. <laughs> yeah, they, they do give us projects right. just to exercise what you've learned. And today, because there's not that much in the technique part, I want to go through the project, but I don't expect you to stitch it out because I have some, <clears throat> I read through it and I have some observations that I uh, have differing opinions on how things were done. So oh, don't laugh, great. Mary. <laughs> so we, can make, we can make notes and fix their stuff. Yeah. That's, that's good too, because we can kind of go slowly and talk about stuff. Because I was doing this yesterday and I tried to take my design to uh, my sonet and it totally changed the design so it's just interesting so how did it change your design what? anyway we'll talk about it later let's go through the lesson but it'll be good we'll have a chance to talk about some of that because i was trying to print out a template so i wanted to take it to my sonet but we'll talk about it later okay uh, it's good for I all of us to understand Liz, she was on for a minute just to say hi. She had her gallbladder surgery on Friday and <clears throat> is not quite up to par. But she did stop by to say hi, so that was good. I'm guessing four small holes is better than a big incision. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, that's a benefit to doing it that way, I'm guessing. But they well, do, I think they like it. They have yeah now before they do anything yeah well better to be safe absolutely okay <clears throat> all right if we're ready then let's start um our lesson today is on fonts and it's on in using the fonts that are built into the machine and specifically the embroidery fonts. So if we go to embroidering, and we don't need to actually embroider, so we can cancel the um, calibration of the hoop. 
And what we want to do is to use this A here over on the side. And that's our load font um, icon. And it'll bring up all the different fonts that are available to us as embroidery fonts. You'll notice at the top we have it says embroidery fonts or stitch fonts. Well, the stitch fonts, if we click on that, hello, <clears throat> it shows us the ones that are available to us in the sewing mode. These fonts can also be used in, my goodness, <laughs> can also be used in embroidery. But today we're going to concentrate on the embroidery fonts. And over on the on the left hand side, you get a a graphic that shows you what the font looks like on the and then you have the name of it and over on the right hand side you have a size of it and i've decided that that size is a millimeter size so if i wanted the adena 30 um, that means it's going to be 30 millimeters high okay <clears throat> so let's follow what they have in the lesson for now um, and they want us to use the pouty font at a size of 30 so if we click on that we get our keyboard and it's arranged just like a regular keyboard on a computer or heaven forbid a typewriter um, the little green arrow down here at the bottom is our shift key so that we're either in caps when that is green or when it's off we're in lowercase and since i've typed that over on the right hand side of it there's a little uh, arrow box with an x in it and that's our erase key so if we have a bunch of letters that we don't want we can erase them if we have are typing something and we make a mistake back in the middle of the letter these two eyes i capital eyes with arrows let us move the cursor to a particular place and then we can erase and maybe insert the proper letter in that place so that can come in really handy um if you want to erase the whole thing, you can just sit on the um, erase key. Down at the bottom, you have on the left hand side, you have the key that puts you into your numeric characters. And beside it is a key that gives you all sorts of weird characters. And the shift key. If you go into that, is that true? Oh, if you when you're doing your password and you need the at sign, it's on that screen where those right next to the uh, number icon. It's over at the left or the right hand side of the space bar is your at sign. So if you're typing in your um, or not password, but your um, email address to sign, you know, if you have to sign in, if you get signed off of my Sonet or something, that's where you're going to find your at sign. Hey, Judy, can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay, so looking at those symbols, um, yes. if you look at the little green highlighted box, does it shift to another screen if you hold down on it? Because it's got those little buttons. No? No, it doesn't. Which, I'm sorry? The little symbols box that's underneath the A with the little dot on top. Yeah. No, yeah. it doesn't. Please. See, it's green, but see how the first, I guess whatever's in the, I don't even know what all those symbols are. I mean, are well, they they're, scientific? They're, used for um different languages M mostly like the 
thing with the two dots over it is I know in German is what they call an umlaut, and that makes the letter sound different. So really the only one we might use on that, well, there's only a few like the and, the question mark, the exclamation point, the apostrophe. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Any other questions on that? Hi, Peg. <clears throat> okay. So using the, um, to go from the uppercase again, this, when this is green, you're in uppercase and that's what is displayed. When you turn off the uppercase, it displays lowercase letters. So you don't have to remember whether you're in uppercase or lowercase. You can just look at the screen and it will tell you which case you're in. So it wants us to, let's see. All right, we've gone through that. What we, um, they have asked us to type in the word so, and with the first letter to be capital S and then EW. All right. Um, it, and I don't see where they, oh, there it was on number, page one on number four. Okay. And then it goes through all the stuff that I just went through. Now, if I touch my load font button now, I can see my what I've typed on the screen. And <clears throat> the reason that you want to do that is to, we want to go through the ways you can reformat or reconfigure whatever you've typed in and that's on the upper bar here where you're um you've typed in your letters the first one which has a b c over a curve if you touch that you get several different shapes that you can possibly that it will possibly create your letters to fit the first one is a straight line which is the default, but there's a little bit more to that and we'll go into that in a minute. Then we have a fairly steep upward curve and a fairly steep downward curve. And then we have the same upward and downward, which are not quite so steep. And then we have some very shallow ones. However, if you touch the first upward curve, the second icon in your text shapes one, you can use the corner handles to manipulate that curve and change it however you would like it to be. Judy, we can't see your screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's Thank all right. You, Mary. I get busy j jabbering. Okay, so you can grab one of the corner handles and do, you know, move them around. I wanted to be able to have it go upside down, but it doesn't do that. <laughs> I guess they're saving me from myself. So, and if I, touch the third one in the downward curve, then it just puts them, you know, at the bottom of the bowl instead of on top of it. And again, it's going to make them more shallow as you go across. All right, but like you can manipulate them. The other thing that you can manipulate them with is if you touch Instead of the ABC, right next to it is our three rectangles connected by some dashes. If you touch that, that is your justification and I'm going to call it and spacing because if you touch the first one, it is even spacing. So however big your curve is, it's going to evenly space your letters on that curve. And that kind of, if you have a really short word, that's kind of crazy. But um, 
sometimes I'm sure it could be useful. Then we have a left justify, a center, and a right justify. And if I come back to my center one, this little slider bar over here lets me move my letters further apart are closer together and it even goes negative and stacks them all up. So you, if depending on the font that you have and the size that you use and the shape of your curve, you may decide that you want your letters to be further apart than the default spacing that the machine has put them in. And then the last adjustment that you can make is over by the OK button on the right hand side. It's a curve with three rectangles sitting on top of the curve. And what that means is that if I touch it, then it's going to make those letters fit square instead of fitting on the bottom of them, fitting on the curve. They're going to be sitting upright, but still curved. Does that make sense? And the symbol as it shows on your um, screen here, um, it's not going to show up on my screen. It shows not what the thing is right now. It shows what it will be if you touch it. So right now, these letters are fitting curved but if i and the symbol is showing the letters upright so if i touch it then the letters become upright and now the symbol shows the letters fitting on the curve so that's if i touch it then it puts them back on the curve which kind of have to think about a little bit in my brain as to what it's doing does that make sense? OK. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. I have a hard time keeping up with my lesson here. All right, but it's once you type something in before you touch OK, if you will clear, you know, now that I have it, say, like I want it, I can touch OK and it stays like I want it. But until I touch OK, then I can manipulate it with those different icons on the keyboard. All right. So you can play with your letters for a minute. And I've gone through, they say I'm on page four, number four. It says, touch the design to select it and drag it towards the top of the hoop, which I have done. And now they, we are asked to touch the load font icon again this judy, time judy your screen your two um your camera needs to be up a little bit further well, hang we, on we lose your screen i know i can't get the whole thing all at once okay okay uh well i can but i'm so far back when i do that you probably can't read it all right, we're going to touch the load font and get our menu again of fonts. And this time we want uh, graphite size 20. So touch that one. And we can go ahead and touch our load font icon, the A. So it shows us what's on the screen. And this time, we want to type in all in uppercase the word fun. All right. And that's all we're going to do with the keyboard. We're just going to say, okay. 
then we're going to go up and touch our layers icon say up here okay and it shows us that we have two things and the word fun is highlighted and selected and you'll notice that as it's selected up here on the top the group icon is highlighted so this word fun is highlighted and i let's see if it could, no i want to i want to show you something okay i'm going to select it again and type it again just to show you okay well poop i didn't want to do that okay i want to clear that but okay let's get rid of that one come on come on oh you're just being oh because i haven't sent out said okay the one i just typed in you can see a, a light green box around each letter okay and that that tells you and you probably can't see it on my screen that tells you that that oh good that those letters are individual and when you say okay and then go to the layers panel the one that's selected the group icon is lit and if you touch it then it expands it out to the individual letters so you can select them individually and if i go to it on the screen having ungrouped it in the layers panel i can manipulate those le letters individually whereas the one that i did not ungroup is always going to be together move your camera up a little bit please so we can see your ungrouped one thank you okay thank you so this is and you can move them around you can resize them you can twirl them you know do whatever you want with them once you have ungrouped them in the layers panel okay So that's basically all of the technique part of it. Um, I do want to, let me get rid of all of this stuff. Come on, quit being a pain. Select all, okay, come on. You are just being naughty. Come on. Back. There are days and there are days. It wouldn't happen if we weren't watching. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> I remember appreciate old, it. Okay. Remember that yeah. old man Murphy? I don't know where that Murphy's Law, you know? Yeah. Okay. You do need to be, if you want to manipulate your letters or you need to be careful as to which font you're using. Because if we go back to that pouty font that we started with and i'm going to use a longer word the word autumn okay and then if i want to curve it look at what happens with the m and the n because it has that curly q at the beginning of the m and the curly q at the beginning of the n it does not look nice okay 
there's no way that you can, um, I mean, you can go into the spacing thing and you can stretch them out, you can move them together, but there's no way that you can get the M and the N to look like the A, U, T, U. I mean, those are nicely spaced there. The A has a little curly Q on it, but it's on the end, so it doesn't really give you a fit. But these two guys, they're not cooperating. So you need to be careful of what fonts you used. If you, if I had typed it as lowercase, then I'm fine. But if I type the whole thing as uppercase, then I run into those um, difficulties that the M and N have the little extra um, curls on the beginning of them and they don't space out pretty. Also, if you are typing something in and you want Normally, if you don't do anything, it's going to just give you something, it's going to give you your letters in a straight line. But if you know that you want to be able to move the letters individually, then if you will use the straight line shape, that will give you the ability to go into the layers panel and ungroup it and then you can move the letters individually. You know, say you wanted to stair step them. Come on. And that's, you know, that's not an option in the spacing. But if you use that straight line shape, then you have the ability to manipulate them, whereas you don't if you just use the default shape. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yes, that's no? great. Yes, no, it's good. Okay. I mean, you can you can do a lot of things with them because you've got, I mean, you can make one bigger or you know, one smaller, you can tilt them using the rotate handle. You can even select one of them and actually go into um, the resize feature, which lets you make them bigger than the 20% bigger or 20% smaller. So you have that option available too. All right. Any questions on that one? Okay. All right. So for right now, come on. All right, get out of edit. Okay. Um, if we don't have, if you don't have any questions on that part, um, I'd like to go into the directions for the little reading pillow. And um, go through those. The pillow, it's made, it's made like a pillow case. Okay, it's not a pillow cover that completely encloses a pillow, nor is it one that um, you make the cover and then stuff. It's a removable pillow case. And it, it calls for a travel size pillow insert, which when I Googled travel size pillows, the majority of them that came up were 14 by 20. And when I went through the instructions here, I discovered that what they're saying is a travel size pillow is 12 by 16. So 
that might be a note that you want to make that the instructions are for you know a smaller pillow than the what the internet seems to think is a travel site or Amazon or lots of other places think of as a travel size pillow. What was Although, that number again, Judy? 12 by 16. Okay. I'm sorry, did you say that this doesn't make 12 by 16, this makes 12 by 12? Is that what you said? No, I say I'm saying that the uh, directions are for the fact that they don't tell you. They just say travel size pillow. Right. Um, the directions once you've made the um, project, it would fit a 12 by 16 pillow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so, and they don't identify the different fabrics. So I went through and on page one where it says cut fabrics as follow. <clears throat> um, fabric A, the 13 by 16 is the back. The front piece is, the front of it is made in three pieces. There's a there are two side pieces in the center piece and the center piece is the one that has the pocket for the book on it so the <clears throat> center piece background the 13 by 8 is what i call the front middle and then the two pieces that are 13 by four and a half are the two ends of the front and the eight inch square is the pocket lining <clears throat> okay, fabric B is the cuff. This is a pillowcase with a cuff on it, like we make often with a hot dog pillow um, method. The fabric C, the 13 by 16, is a um, background if you will they have you put a like it's it's like a lining that goes behind the pieced front that they want to cover up the seam so when it's taken on and off of the pillow you're not raveling out the seams judy you're amazing for figuring this all out just so you know it, oh, thanks diane it drives me crazy when like they don't tell me what i want to know Fabric D, the 11 inch square is your pocket. And the, then there's batting that goes on, fusible batting that goes behind the pocket. And the pocket is 11 inches square, just so you can embroider on it. And then you will cut it down. All right. And I, I had to draw myself a little diagram of it to, to figure it out. <laughs> so let's go back to our machines our, and let's create the design that they have made for this project. And it's, it's actually really cute. So go into load font and this time I'm on page four, step 24. Is that right? Nope, I'm sorry, I got my pages mixed up. Let's start off at the beginning. Go to page two, page <laughs> number one, which is to go into embroidery, number two. Number three, we wanna make sure we have the right hoop. We want a 260 by 200 hoop. All right. And then we want to go to our designs, touch the butterfly icon up here at top. And we want to go to the children's category. And we want to pick number 19, which is this cute little dragon or dinosaur peeking out of a 
window. And I'm just going to center him in my hoop so you can see him. And make sure your dragon is selected and then grab one of the handles. I don't want to delete you. And size him up as big as he will go, which is only 20%, but that's okay for our purposes. Now I'm on page three, number 11. We're going to touch our load fonts and we're going to pick graphite 20. And we are going to type in the word reading. And only the first letter is capitalized. Then we want to go to our shapes icon and you can touch your load font so you can see your word on your screen and move it up off of the dragon. And notice that at this point, there are little green boxes around each letter of that word. So you couldn't manipulate them individually if you ungroup them after you said okay. But right now, let's don't say okay. Um, we want to select our shaping icon, the ABC down here. And we want to select the arch upward one so that your word looks like that. And then we can say, okay okay and then you can move this up to where it looks good above the little guy there i think that's centered okay now we're going to get another font touch the load font again and this time we're going to pick curls 12 And we are going to type in opens when, and the word open um, is, I'm sorry, is only, it's capitalized, oh, space, and then windows is all uppercase. You can't see that. Oops, too many O's. Okay, so it says open windows, opens windows. And then we're just going to select, we're going to shape it by selecting the arch downward one. So it's the bottom of the bowl and touch OK. Then we can move that down underneath him. Um, OK, that's page three. Now we're on page four. Number 24 on page four, touch your load font again. This time we're going to go all the way down to our times font and size 12. And we are going to type in the words all in lowercase, two words, two space the and then just say okay because we just want that as a stop a straight line and we don't want to make it arched or mess with it or anything so that's okay now one more line so touch load font again and this time we are going to go back to our pouty 
one, but this time it's size 20. And um, we're going to type in the word imagination capitalized. And we are just going to say, okay. So now we have all of these. And so you can arrange them on your screen so they look like you like them. Come on, little dragon. Okay. Come on, stay up. All right. Now, if we touch the layers icon up here on the top, and we say select all, which is the very first icon over here on top. All of them are gray, saying they are selected. So that's all we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure we selected all of them so we can close our dialog box. And now we want to go into edit down here at the bottom. And we want to, on the control wheel, touch, make sure that the move icon is highlighted, is green, the four-headed arrow. And you want to touch the center of your control wheel, which centers the whole thing in the hoop. And now, you have a design that is ready to be stitched out. It's darling. <laughs> Pardon? It's darling. Isn't it cute? That is the cutest little dragon, I think. And I want to save it. I mean, you could put any um, design in there, but the, the words fit the embroidery design, you know, opens windows and it looks like he's looking out of a window. I think it's pretty cute. Um, so that's, so, you know, save your design, put it in the cloud on your machine or, you know, whatever. If you wanted to change something, you could change something about it. Would you go over how to save it? I'm all of a sudden confused. Um, how to save it? Yeah. Okay, so down, and you can't see it real well, down here on where it says embroidery stitch out, underneath that is a heart. So if you touch that heart, it brings up the save screen. Okay. And then you pick where you want to save it. Do you want to save it as my Sonet or do if you have a USB device in your machine, it would let you save it to a USB. Right now it says my Sonet. And down here in the box where you would name it, it says new design and you've got a keyboard where you can blank out that new design. Um, if you've got folders in your Sonet, you can pick a folder to put it in, or you can just put it in my Sonet as a whole and not in a folder. So that's up to you where you would put it. If you want to make a new folder, then you've got this little folder symbol over to the right of the name bar with a plus sign. And if you touch that, it will bring up a screen to allow you to create a new folder and give it a name. Otherwise, just give it a name like Dragon Reading or something like that. And say, OK, and it will just put it in your Sonet and pop you right back to Embroidery Edit. Okay, super. All right, 
so that's all that I have as far as creating your design, but we have page six and seven of our directions, which talk about putting the pillow together. Um, once you have embroidered your design on that 11 inch square with the fused batting on it, then they want you to trim that down to an eight inch square. Um, I wasn't sure that an eight inch square is real useful for kids books, but you know, I have this little um, golden book that, you know, we all grew up with a hundred years ago. And I measured it and it measured, oh, a little over, um, it was six, a uh, little over six and a half inches. So if that you're trimming the pocket to eight inches, that means quarter inch seams, you're gonna end up with a pocket that's seven and a half inches and certainly a book that size will fit, okay? So that's something to kind of keep in mind. I know books, kids' books come in all sizes. Um, and this is the size they chose to make this. Just information for that. Uh, once you have made, um, embroidered your pocket and trimmed it down, um, it tells you to put the lining with it and then sew across the top edge you know, like you have two pieces and you just put them together and do your quarter inch seam on top. And then they t say, press the uh, seam allowance and the lining to one side and edge stitch on the lining side. I don't know if edge stitching is a term or in a technique used in garment stitching and i tried to show what this was i pushed i ironed the seam allowances to one side and then i this is where my seam is where my thumbnail is you're going to stitch just barely to the lining side of that seam to hold those seam allowances in the direction that you want them. Does that make sense? I mean, it's often used on necklines uh, that are faced on garments to keep the lining from rolling up to the top, the wrong side or the right side. That's its purpose. It's just kind of, it keeps it stable and doesn't let the, it move if that makes sense. Anybody who's a garment sewer probably has encountered that. All right, then they talk about on in step uh, 54, they say to make a line to the, the center panel of the pillow front, the 13 by eight panel, you need to draw a line two inches up from the bottom and they tell you to put your pocket. If this were my piece of fabric and this were my line, I would put my pocket like this and they say, sew it down and then flip it up. And then when you put the edge pieces on, they will encompass the raw edges of that pocket. And that makes your pocket, you have the closed top and they tell you to top stitch the bottom. The thing I didn't like about that was that it left me a raw edge inside the pocket. So since you're gonna top stitch it anyhow, if you were to flip your two pieces, your pocket and your lining, put them right sides together and then seam them and flip them back right sides out, with them seamed, you could just top stitch that onto that center panel and you wouldn't have a raw edge inside. Uh, 
Does that make sense? Mary's shaking her head yes. Diane's shaking hers yes. Okay, great. Good idea. Um, Why did they speak on it? You ahead. should write these for them. I'm sorry? I said you should write these for them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want me. <laughs> yeah, you're just talking about uh, seaming the bottom as well as it's the top, not the sides. Right, because the sides are going to be caught in the seams right. when you put the end pieces on. And if you sewed it all up, you couldn't turn it inside out. <laughs> yeah, there is that problem. <laughs> um, and that's, you know, then they have you put the edge pieces, the end pieces on, and then put that lining panel that um, we talked about at the very beginning and that, that extra piece of fabric, which its sole purpose is to cover up those raw edge seams on the inside so that putting it on and off the pillow, you're not fraying those seams. And the other thing, that's step 59 where they tell you to put the the lining piece they call it, it's muslin and then the pillow front should now measure 13 by 16 and the back piece was cut at 13 by 16. and normally when we make um our hot dog pillowcase method. Uh, we have, um, we don't have two side seams. This has two side seams. So in order to put the cuff on, you're gonna have to seam up one of the side seams. And if you are going to use the French seam method or enclosed seam method, for your side seams, that's how you need to sew the side seam to put the front and the back together so you can put the cuff on. Does that make sense? I mean, if you just sew it, you're going to have a raw edge. But if you do the enclosed seam where you sew wrong sides together first and then flip it and so the right sides together that raw edge then becomes enclosed inside that like we did on those little gift bags that we made so you want to make a note on um, 60 and 61 it says so across the top edge and i'm not sure what they mean by top edge but it's the 16 inch side and if you want that to be an enclosed seam, then do it as a French seam, where, again, where you sew wrong sides together, then flip it and sew right sides together. And so once you've sewn that seam, you have one piece of fabric, and then you can put the cuff on because it's cut all as one piece. So you have to have that one side seam sewn on the pillowcase to, in order to put the cuff on. Okay. And they tell you to, on step, page seven, step 64, they say, sew the cuff on with a quarter inch seam allowance and then press the cuff uh, away from the pillowcase body fabric. And then they have you roll it up as if it were the hot dog pillow. And if you're not familiar with that um, concept, it real it works really, really well to um, so you end up with the seam that puts the cuff on is completely enclosed. Is there somebody who hasn't done a pillowcase that way? <laughs> okay. Um, I did one similar, but 
it wasn't called hot dog, but I'm thinking it was a similar concept. I, I've only it's done it's it called times. hot dog or burrito. You know, it depends on where you're coming from, what they call it. <laughs> Can you Google it and get the in what it means? Yeah, or I have I I have a one page thing I could probably email you if you would like. Oh, that would be lovely. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. You're most welcome. And then I think the rest of it is, you know, eventually you're going to have to sew your last side seam. And again, if you want the enclosed seams, then that's up to you. I mean, you could, if you have a serger, or you can use your overlock stitches on your sewing machine to cover up your raw edges. It's up to you how you want to do it. I just, I really like the, the enclosed or French seam because it gives such a nice finished edge and it's durable. So Judy, does it change the size of things though when you're making, I can see we're on the, the panel on the front, it probably didn't make that big of a difference to have a French seam there, but does it change your dimensions enough that it matters? Um, not really. Um, if you're going to do that, it you can add an extra quarter inch on an edge to allow for it. Because what I usually do is to do do a quarter inch seam and then trim it to an eighth of an inch and then flip it and do a quarter inch again. So, you know, you could add a little bit um, to the 13 inch dimensions. And even the, well, not the third, yeah, the third, the 13 inch dimension, which ends up being the 16 inch side, if that makes sense. Okay. Any questions on any of this so far? And you can really do a lot with the fonts, um, even though you only have those uh, few tools. But the fact that you can ungroup them and manipulate them however you want gives you a lot of uh, room to play. The only thing you have to really remember is that if you have something that's you're starting out as a straight line and you want to play with it, you do do need to use the uh, straight line spacing uh, option so that uh, you can manipulate them. Otherwise, if it just gives you the default of the straight line, it's not going to, it's not grouped it's not um, individual letters grouped. It, it's permanently one word. Okay, and then the, again, the sizes are like millimeter sizes. So that gives you a, a kind of a reference for that. I'm always going, how many inches is 30 millimeters? My brain hasn't started to work that way yet. Well, the best thing to do is get you a ruler that has both of them on it, one on top and one on the bottom. And just go to 30 millimeters and then slide up and say, okay, that's so many inches. This, this ruler is useless. It doesn't have them both on there. <laughs> um, it's like if you have a, a 25 millimeters to an inch, isn't it? 2.54 millimeters to an inch? 25 millimeters to an inch. 
Oh, two point five four centimeters. Yes, twenty five to an inch. Yes, you're right. I remember, you know, in the software when you type in one inch, it'll always change it to twenty five millimeters when you change in your grid size and stuff. So yeah. that's just. But if you've got a ruler that has like, and this doesn't want to show it. Okay, like this has millimeters on the bottom and inches on the top so if it was 30 millimeters that'd be about an inch and a quarter yeah mine has centimeters which i think you just divide by a hundred ten there's ten. ten centimeter or ten millimeters to a centimeter so like here the three that's three centimeters, which is 30 millimeters. Which is 30 millimeters, right. Okay, there's 10 millimeters to a centimeter. Oh, I wish I had this class yesterday because this is what I was doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is what I ended up with. Can, can you guys see that? Life is good. Oh, you were working on your uh, the license to create. License to create, right. That is cute. I didn't understand all that moving the letters around. I was like, I just kind of did it. So, oh well. Now you I understand did it. Yeah. And these are the ones I made from your other class. I have one for my granddaughter's high school graduation and one for my sister. Oh, cool. Your bags. How nice. It's good. But what I was talking about before is I tried, I designed this life is good in my machine. And then I wanted to make a template. So I took it, I put it on a stick and took it to my software. Yeah. And it made the good vertical instead of horizontal when I took it over there. So what I finally had to do was, I mean, I kept trying different things, making the hoop bigger, all sorts of things. But finally, I just had to do two different designs and then take the two different designs over there. So I don't understand why that was, but it was interesting. Maybe someday we can pursue that. Yeah, so anyway, but it works. Because it is hard to figure out the sizes, and that's why I like to make templates, because then I can put it on top, even if it's just on a piece of paper, at least I know what it looks like. Yeah, I do that <laughs> a lot. Mary, did you have something? Oops. I don't, I don't think so. I was just wondering, uh, did you try sending it? through SoNet and did that make any difference? I would, I would love to know how to send from my icon to my laptop. You think I could do that? I, I think I might know now. I don't know though. Let's try to send this design. Go If you're in embroidery. Oh, uh, that's just the design we just worked with, this reading one. All right, hit, your, try edit. To send. hit, your, hit your edit button. Oh, yeah. It looks like a paper airplane. See it down here where my thumb oh, is, Lee? Yeah. Oh, just a second. Okay, so I'm not supposed to be in edit. There am I. I'm getting out of you're edit. In embroidery edit, and then you touch the edit function down here at the bottom. Okay. All right, now. Oh, go ahead, look Mary. at that. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> but then where is it going to show up in my computer? I guess in my cloud that I figured out yesterday. Well, it did open library. the software. Oh, it did. It just showed up in my software. Cool. Incredible. That Mary it just magic. Popped right in there. But you uh -huh. know, this we saved it to the cloud. If you saved it using the heart then you should be able to access it on your computer from the cloud just open yeah, up this is, 
I mean, this is better. This is amazing. I don't have to go find the cloud. I finally found the cloud <laughs> yesterday. The first time I ever found the cloud. Oh, okay. Except for just looking at it. So, oh, this is so neat. Look at that. It just popped right into my screen. Yep. Thank you. Huh. Amazing. Lee had a little issue with the cloud yesterday. I see, I've never had the cloud working in my laptop. Except to send stuff once so I anyway but I never could see the cloud actually in the laptop but now Judy showed me what I was doing wrong so I figured it out finally after four years <laughs> <laughs> but that is really neat it just popped right in here that's yeah. incredible into my software that's where it popped yeah right. and that's what it's supposed to do yeah, yeah. It's supposed to open up because it doesn't know what else to do. Just like when if That's you the software and you did a send instead of an export, okay. it would open up. I mean, your your machine has to be on, but you could send it right to your machine. And since you have two of them, depends you could send it to your Epic or to your Icon. Right. Well, and I'm doing that all the time now since with the new, with the icon and the new Epic. Yes, I'm sending it from the computer to the machine, but I didn't know I could send it from the machine to the computer. <laughs> that's the new piece. <laughs> so thank you. That's perfect. So that's what the little airplane is. Amazing. They use that little airplane symbol a lot. Ah, so I never sending. know what that was. I never used it. Now, if you're, in, if you're in the library, in the MySonet library, uh -huh. they have a little airplane and you can send it to your software, you can send it to your machine, you can send it to your cloud. Hmm. Now, is that true with the Epic also? Sure. Yeah. I never knew that. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to explode your brain here in a couple of days. No, it takes, you know, it takes a long time to learn all these little things. So it's just a whole process, which is great. That's why it's so much fun. <laughs> so okay. I'm in the process of recreating the whole little dinosaur thing, because when I saved it, I made a new folder called Icon, and I told it to save it in there, but it didn't. So now I'm recreating it. And I'm going to try to save it again and see what happens. Okay. When you, you create that folder, you have uh -huh. to touch it to open it it has to say let me show you okay so okay so i want to make a new folder right and i put and i say i say icon and then i say okay so now touch i it. have my folder icon i have to come on stop it You're just being a pain. I want it to open. There it is. It has to look like this. You have to see the word icon up here. That's what I did wrong. Yeah. And then name it and save it. Okay. Okay. Good thing I have all the steps to recreate it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, if you saved it, it should be just in your Sonnet. And if you would get on your computer and open your cloud, you could move it. But, or you could bring it back up on your screen and then open this folder and save it to that folder. But you I deleted it off my screen. It again. I deleted it off my screen because I thought I'd saved it. So it wouldn't be in my Sonet. You might look. Yeah, if you did, it should be down with your files. Yeah. Yes. You actually... I, it should be down. We will be back at Rapid Games for opening weekend, April 24th, 640. It should right. be down, you know. Yeah, Diane, I just did that and I didn't think mine was there and I opened it up on my machine and it's saved. Um in my Sonet. 
Okay, I'll look. It should be down here in this alphabetically in this, you know, all of this stuff. Yeah, mine's from After my your folders. Actually, my yeah, because I titled mine Reading Dragon, it went right to the bottom of my list. I don't have a lot there, but I do have some. <laughs> I have a lot, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't have a lot. Ask Lee how many she has. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that I, the other day. Yeah, I delete. I've deleted after yesterday finally backing it up. It's there. I just didn't see it. Yeah, it it was it went mine went easy. Okay. So you could just Diane, you could just open it up, right? And then go in to save, and oh, open your icon I, folder. That's what I'll do. And save it in your icon folder. Oh, nice. All right. Perfect. It's just like the computer when you don't get it in the right place. <laughs> Ugh. Don't even go down that road. All right. Any anything else that we can discuss on this these fonts or this project or in general? Yeah, I got your phone number. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I just learned so much. That was really helpful. I wish I'd waited until today, but that's okay. It's done. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Lee, look at it like this. When you <laughs> learn it the hard way and you learn it the easy way, you'll never forget it. That's true. That's so true. <laughs> okay. If, Thanks, if you are wanting reading pillows and this um, project of doing it as a pillowcase isn't what you had in mind, if you had more of a um, pillow cover that, you know, you could take the pillow out of and wash the cover and so forth. Um, Hope Yoder has a reading pillow pattern and it fits the same size pillow, but the pocket is much larger and the there's a little pocket over on the left-hand side if they wanted to do pencils or whatever. Judy, is that a normal pillow size then? It's the 12 by 16. Although I had some discussion on sizes there too. <laughs> a discussion with yourself? With these directions. Oh. <laughs> okay. But I'm in the process of making three of these. Do you um, have any do you have any of them done yet? I don't have them done. I can show you what I've done. Are those done more in the hoop then? Yeah. Like she, yeah, yeah some, of them, more some of them are. Yeah, that one looked like it had more. It wasn't quite as much sewing. Turn on the light and see if we can get the camera to see what I want it to see. Okay. Oh, I see your feet. Okay. So, all right, so I've got one little boy who loves dinosaurs. So I found oh. a embroidery design, which is his first initial made up of dinosaurs. Um, and I'm gonna show you the back side. This is one panel, and this is the panel that the pocket will go on, all right? On the front or the back? It's well, I just you can't see the design on the front. Well, maybe oh, yeah, you, can. you can. We can. Okay, this this is where the pocket will go, and then there is the side panel over here, and these need to be cut down. And then I did not for little kids, I'm talking three, five, and seven. I did not want that open pocket, I didn't like the pencil thing that way so I made oh, cute. A, a zipper pocket which will get top stitched onto this side panel instead of that open pocket to 
slide things in. Oh, that's really cute. And then this is this is the back, which gets uh, turn it over so you can see. Um, it gets cut into two and made into an overlapping panel back. So that's the dinosaur one. Then there's a unicorn one, Ooh. which I haven't done the quilting on yet. Judy, color it in with your pencils. I don't want to color it in. Oh, it's so, oh, it's embroidered. It's pretty. It's embroidered. And that's, let's see, that's, that's the back that gets cut into two after it's quilted. And then there's a mermaid one. And are those all super designs? I'm sorry? Are those all super designs? Hope Yoder, I think she said. No, this the mermaid is a Hope Yoder design. Nothing else is. And the, the mermaid I did have, I do have quilted thanks to a built-in stitch on the epic. <laughs> And I do have, I was able to find some unicorn fabric and some mermaid fabric to make the pockets for those. Those are really cute designs, really cute. Thank you. But that's, well, her directions you had you, I mean, it's supposed to fit a 12 by 16 pillow, but, she has you cutting fabric at 11 inches. To me, that's not going to fit a 12 inch pillow. So, Judy, was the unicorn the Hope Yoder then? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Where'd you find it? In my stash <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> okay, I should not have even asked. Well, embroidery designs are kind of like fabric. Uh, yeah, but you got to remember where you put them all. Well, there's a nice thing in Windows Explorer called search. <laughs> if they're named correctly. Yeah, but if they've got to have the right name attached to them. Right. I know that I hope they put a search function on the machine search soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyhow. So that's what I'm entertaining myself with lately. It's just, you know, there are lots of, I'm sure there are a lot of patterns out there for reading pillows. I just, I liked that one because the pocket was larger. And you, could put, you know, some kids books like the Dr. Seuss books are a little bit bigger. And I thought that would, work for them we'll see if nothing else they can flip them over and take a nap <laughs> well uh they may take a nap on them anyway without flipping them if you can yeah. kids don't take naps nowadays you know they don't no That's a shame. <laughs> Yeah, they fall asleep. They may not want to go down, but they fall asleep. The real young ones, but yeah. But probably not after four or five. Yeah. Okay. I don't think even my great granddaughter, I'm not around her a lot, but she's only three. She refuses. She'll be walking dead before she goes to sleep. She refuses. She's afraid she's going to miss something. Yeah, well, she probably falls asleep, though. She sits down and falls asleep. Well, they just put, her, put her in the car. Start the car, pull out of the driveway, and she goes to sleep, and they carry her in the house. Does that avoid the fight? Yeah. Gonna... Oh, yeah. She goes in the car, so she's one of these people, like, when you're driving down the road, and you're sitting in the passenger seat, and the sun hits you, and you kind of lay your head back, you can go to sleep. That's what she does. But she does it because I think it's just the idea of being put in the car in a car seat. Okay, well, that's 
what I have for you today. And I appreciate all of you for being here. Diane, I will send you that hot dog burrito pillowcase instruction. Thank you. Oh, Diane, you love it. You won't ever do them again. You will never do a pillowcase any other way. You know, I did one that Missouri Star had a video on. And that's when I started making a pillowcase to go with the quilts I gave the grandkids. But then I decided to make pillow shams instead of cases. So I've only, I think I've only made one. So, but I, a refresher would be great. I think okay. I've gotten, I think I'm up to about 40 pillowcases. <laughs> Are you really? That's awesome. Yeah, I don't have, I have, might have four left. But yeah, they, everybody that saw them, everybody, all the grandkids, anybody they knew, they all wanted a pillowcase for they basically camping. So it's got wildlife and stuff on them, but they were, they're so fun. And once you do start doing assembly, do one, and then pretty soon you're cutting three at a time, then you're cutting four at a time, and then you just got to put them together. Great mm -hmm. idea. Susie, did you need something, hon? No? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm glad you were here. I am too. Thank you. you. I'm going to go. Okay. Bye. 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 See you. Thank you, Bye. everybody. And uh, hey, we'll. Judy. Hey, Judy. Yeah. Are you going to do the software club on Friday? No, Carol is, as far as I know. Carol is. My granddaughter's going to be here for the day and. I'm torn whether she can just hang with Papa and her brother or if I should. Um, I may get on for part. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know she well, could entertain herself, but I hate to not spend time with her while she's here. Well, she, she's almost not, nine. You know, it'll be recorded. Well, that's we'll have instruction. Yeah. So I hate to miss it, but I may have her hang out with me for a little bit and see how she does. Um, you get my, my, Diane, give her something to do. Give her some of your, if you want to trust her with your pencils, get online and print out a page for her to color. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll embroider something for her to color. She's very art. I was thinking we'd make Mother's Day cards, but we'll probably have time to do that anyway. But maybe I'll print out a unicorn for her to color on fabric. She's pretty savvy she could probably do that while i'm doing class no she might have fun doing it too yeah she probably would she probably you know. would okay all well, right ladies you well, have a good day you have too day. see you guys later you. Right, bye bye